friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video about colour. If you're new here, hi, my name's Holly. I'm an illustrator specialising in book cover design and this is the second video in a series about colour. So if you'd like to go and see the first one, which covers sort of an overview of the colours of the rainbow as they are represented in book cover design, then I will link that up here um, on one side or the other. And Otherwise, welcome to the colour red. As I mentioned in that first video, red is generally associated with blood and violence, but also love and passion, at least in the sort of English speaking world or the, the Western world. And there are many other meanings to the, the colour red in different cultures. So if you know of any of those and have any examples of those particularly in book design that would be super interesting please put those down in the comments but I'll be speaking mostly about books in English. Red is a colour that is used across all genres but it's found more so in some than others so horror is the one that really comes to mind you see a lot of red and black in horror covers obviously the blood association likewise in crime you often see red used on, on crime covers and true crime covers and in fantasy as well I've got a few examples of that. Of course that's not to say that it doesn't exist in other genres that those are just the ones that really come to mind when I think of red. So I mentioned in the previous video about these books here um, the, the Shades of Magic books and the, the covers look kind of like this <laughs> um, or a lot like this and these use red black and a bit of grey and white. The the reason those colours have been chosen for this are to do with the subject matter in the books. So there are different Londons within this world. So there is Red London, there's White London, Grey London and Black London. And our main character wears a very peculiar coat which is often red, sometimes different colours, and so we've got the red coat here. And across all of Victoria Schwab's or V.E. Schwab's books we see a lot of red being used It's kind of her brand even when it's not this trilogy uh, the the vicious and vengeful books use a lot of red as well I think because of the theme of, of violence and revenge often to do with anger as well that's another one that often goes with with violence. So because of that red seems like a, a very sensible choice for these books and for Victoria Schwab's branding as a whole. Then I'll move on to this one here which is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This doesn't have a huge amount of red on the cover, uh, it does have a little bit more on the spine, um, but each of these books, each of these three books has a different colour and it makes sense that red is the first one because this is a book that is very violent, um, there's a lot of of gore and, and violence in it and it, it's very much about revenge. This is also a world where there are three suns in the sky which are different colours so red is, is one of those and the other two colours are represented in the other two books in this trilogy. The American editions of these books also use red across all three of the books as well as quite dark uh, grungy fantasy colours. This book also makes so much sense with a red cover. It's called Children of the Furnace by Bryn Murray and she is a New Zealand author. This is in a world which has been completely devastated by climate change and around the equator it's completely impossible for life to, to thrive or, or for people to live so that that's kind of the, the furnace side of things so to have a red cover on this makes an awful lot of sense the red on this cover also really helps it to stand out on a shelf likewise with Kindred by Octavia Butler this is one of many editions of this book as well uh, but this is a sci-fi time travel story so sort of historical fiction sort of sci-fi and it's it's to do with slavery these people get sucked back into the past and um, have to deal with a world where slavery is is a reality where the color of their skin matters an awful lot more than it does in in the, the modern day where they come from so black white and red really makes sense for this story that is about the colors of different people's skin and about violence and before i move on to the final examples there is this one here which is an illustrated novel by patrick ness and illustrated by ravina kai and here red has been used as a highlight cover, color um, to 
again represent blood and violence. This is a retelling of Moby Dick. I haven't actually read this so I can't sort of speak to the exact uh, ways that red are used or what the ways that red are are significant. I can guess from the cover that this is yes about about blood. You've got a whale with a harpoon sticking out of it and throughout this book red is used as a highlight colour. Most of this is very sort of black and white. It's got a sort of bluish tinge to it but yeah red is is a highlight colour used for emphasis throughout the story. I just want to cover a couple of other ways that red can be used. One is in relation to communism and of course when we think of communism we think of the, the flag, the hammer and sickle, we, we think of com communist propaganda and posters which use a lot of red and a, a lot of black and white and that's what has been used with this cover here which is about a gay couple living in China in the 19th 80s. Again, I haven't read this so I can't talk completely to it, but it seems that you know it's called Beijing Comrades and it's got red on the cover and on the spine and the back. So it really makes sense that red is um, is representing communism here, but also love and passion. As you may have noticed from these examples, red is often used alongside black and white, and nowhere is this more true than the classic Twilight cover or covers I should say, but of course it started with this uh, very simple cover for the first book. The, the title is very small, you can tell that this is before you know, the, the internet really got swamped with books and where titles had to be large, but the graphic is, is very clear and um, it does work well as a thumbnail in terms of the image. Uh, but yes, we've got the black background, very moody and dark, and then we've got the white skin, maybe a little bit sparkly and and the the red apple which of course stands out so much against these two other well shades that are you know don't have any saturation to them so the red is this really saturated red which means that it's it's as red as it can get basically um, and that just makes it a very bold statement as with some of these other ones that I've showed. Of course here we're very much going back to the the love side of things or certainly the lust side of things and also blood is a major theme in this book um, so the, the colours make a lot of sense, the background you know sort of representing night, vampires come out at night and the, the white skin which is of course very much associated with vampires as well. Uh, so I mean all in all this is a fabulous cover. It's it's perfect for the genre, it's perfect for the story, and I think it was a big part of what made these books so successful. Another one where red is used as a story element and it, it's used within the story to represent something or several things, and that is in The Handmaid's Tale. And of course in this one the, the women wear these very modest garbs, um, the, these robes, and the, the sort of iconic headpiece that we see on a lot of these covers. And the red represents their role in society as handmaids, as women who are able to bear children. So in this case the, the red does represent blood and it represents life, uh, but it's also a very oppressive colour because of the the world that they live in which can become very very bloody and very violent very quickly. Now, I haven't read The Handmaid's Tale since I was at school but it, it still sticks in my head very vividly and as do many scenes with, within that book where red is uh, a very prominent colour let's say. I'll be interested to read The Testaments, Margaret Atwood's follow up to the, the Handmaid's Tale which has got a green cover um, or a green highlight on the cover and um, I think that might be related to one of the other roles within Gilead society. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content about colours and about book design in general I have done a heap of of videos about book design in the past and I plan to do many more so do hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell which lets you know when new videos arrive as they do every week <laughs> and please hit the like button as well because that really helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps this video to be shown to other people who also like this kind of thing. 
As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.